Hi, welcome back to the Distressed Princess. Today I'm joining a thrift store flip collab and the host is Sandra over at DIYs at the Schwowen's Nest. So these are the things that I found at my local Goodwill. And I'm not, I guess this might have been a cookie jar, but it didn't have a lid and I paid $2. And this, I knew probably had some sort of a, I, I imagine it had a glass top for a shelf. And the sticker says $1, but it was half price, so I got 50 cents on that. And then this brass item was $2, and I knew immediately what I wanted to do with all of these things when I saw them at Goodwill. And this one is a very interesting cutting board that the plastic cutting board part slides out and it was $2 and it's the only one out of the group that I wasn't quite sure what I was going to do with it but I knew that I liked it and it had potential. So I started with the flip that I was most excited about and I knew I wanted to make an indoor herb planter out of this brass piece. So I bought these buckets at Walmart. They were 98 cents a piece and I'm going to spray paint them white. I know Hobby Lobby carries buckets that are already white. I just wasn't near Hobby Lobby. So you can save a step and buy buckets that are already white if you're near a Hobby Lobby. And I use a flat black paint, spray paint, to paint the brass piece. And here are my buckets. And the idea is to make these buckets look like enamel planters. And they're going to have tags on the front of them and hang from this once brass piece. Now the next step is to mark where you're going to drill holes into the bucket and then drill those holes. And I just did a half inch and an inch down from the top. I've seen some girls on some other channels use a tool that is like a hole punch for metal and I'd like to get one of those. The next step is to turn these buckets into enamelware and at first I was going to use my Sharpie paint pen to color around the top edge, but this was taking a long time and I have six buckets to do so I stopped doing that and I went and got my apple barrel black paint and sponge brush and this goes much much faster and then I'll use the sharpie pen to draw on the little chippy places later. Now I'm going to make the chalkboard tags using these chalkboard wood stakes and this white marker from the Dollar Tree. And they have several versions of these chalkboard tags, so if you don't have these very ones, you could use the ones that come with the clothespins, or you could even use the ones that come with the jute string to tie with. So yeah, you're not limited to just these ones that I'm using. So I broke the stakes off the back of the chalkboard so that I could write the names of the herbs on the front of them. To glue the chalkboard tags onto the front of the buckets, I'm using a combination of super glue Fix all adhesive for the permanent hold. It works like E6000 and also hot glue for the immediate hold. And I'm only putting right in the middle where the tag will actually be touching the round bucket. And it's very important to use something besides just hot glue because hot glue and metal don't get along. Next, I prepare my buckets for hanging with zip ties from the Dollar Tree and I just put them through the holes that were drilled earlier. Mm -hmm. 
then I had to think about how this was going to hang on the wall and I'm going to use this garden flag stake or garden flag holder from the Dollar Tree and remove the pieces from it that I don't need and make kind of a bar for this metal rack to hang from. The metal pieces on this are really easy to detach, just <laughs> a little bit of pressure and, and they pop right off. I mean, we're talking about Dollar Tree products, so yeah, it's not like you need a bunch of tools or anything. And this actually was longer than what I really needed it to be, so I used wire cutters and just bending back and forth to snap a segment off of it and made it the length that I needed. Now any chippy places, I just covered that up with my Sharpie paint pen. I used command hooks to hold that bar onto the wall and now it's time to hang the planters. And so this didn't go exactly like I had envisioned. When I pulled the zip tie tight, I tried to pull it, of course, as tight as I possibly could. You'll see in just a minute that the buckets want to tilt backwards. And I have a real good solution for this, especially for those that can't find um, a hanging rack like this. I think that you could make this whole thing with one of those cooling racks from the Dollar Tree and its bars are close enough together that you won't have this bucket tipping back like this. So to solve this problem at my house, I just used the hot glue <laughs> to make the zip tie more secure onto the bar that it was hanging from so that the bucket stayed front and center. Then I just cut the tail of the zip tie off the back. Then all there is to do is put your herbs inside. And I think you can put, these buckets are big enough, you could put a whole container of whatever herbs you're wanting to use. Now I didn't have any, so these are just some little fake plants that I had to put inside just for display purposes only. Next, I tackled the house-shaped cutting board. And I thought and thought, you know, of course, obviously, I could make this a house. Houses are so popular and I love them, but I came up with another idea. I'm not using the actual cutting board, the plastic part, I just wanted the wood part. And so I used pliers to remove the feet that were stapled on the bottom. So my idea was to make this a church since Easter is coming and I had this scrap piece of wood that I had left over from other projects. It was already painted white and that's going to be the steeple. So I marked off the pointy end where the steeple will be. And then I ever so sweetly asked my husband if he would please take this down to the shed and cut this piece of wood for me. I thought it was really shaping up cute already. Now, the next thing is using this box from the Dollar Tree and I just need one of the wooden sides and I'm going to make a door and two windows. Actually, I need two sides of this box. That's right. I need both sides of the box that are solid and don't have the star cutouts. If you score a line in this thin wood, just keep digging a few times into it. It will snap apart. And then just cut off the jaggedy pieces that might be sticking out and sand the end. And doesn't that make just the cutest sinking door for the front of our church? Now the other cut end of that piece of wood will be one of the windows. And here I just use the same process as before to make the second window. Next I used wood glue from the Dollar Tree 
and hot glue for the immediate hold to glue the steeple down. If you wanted to recreate this project using Dollar Tree items, they have houses at Dollar Tree and you could use one of their long wooden decorations for the steeple and make this exactly like I did. Next, I used Rust-Oleum chalked in linen white to paint the whole church. And honestly, I thought for a minute about leaving the house part of the church wooden. And I still think that that would have been a cute option too, but ultimately, no, I wanted my whole church to be white. Next, I had to decide what colors the door and windows should be, and I decided that I would use the Waverly Antique Wax and the Baby Wipe technique to make my wooden door. At first, I thought that I might would do the windows the same way as the door, but I was afraid that that might look like the windows were boarded up on my church, and I didn't want that. So I decided to use this gray chalk paint and I'm doing one coat of the chalk paint and then I go over it with a dry brush of the linen white to bring down that darkness of the gray paint. Then I used that white marker from the Dollar Tree to draw on some window panes. Then I thought the window needed some definition around the edge, so I used a regular black Sharpie just to go around the edges. Then I assembled my church using wood glue and hot glue to put the door and windows in place. And I drew a door handle on the door with my Sharpie marker. To make the details on the steeple, I'm using a brush set from the Dollar Tree and that gray chalk paint, which came from Michaels. I don't know that I mentioned that before. And I wanted there to be a round window at the top and I'm giving painting, hand painting, a whirl. I've never considered myself a very good painter, but I'm really going to try hard to do more of it and maybe I'll get better. After I had the basics painted on, then I went back with that white marker to add the window panes in the round window and add some highlights to the cross. Then I thought it needed a little more detail, so I went back with my black Sharpie to add a touch of black onto the cross and to go around the round window. And then I remembered I wanted that round window to match the bottom windows, so I kind of frosted that in with a dry brush of the linen white chalk paint. The last step to making this church was to take some sandpaper and distress around the edges, making it look so stinking cute.
Here's a reminder of what that milk can cookie jar looks like before I took it outside and spray painted it white. Now, I didn't have enough white spray paint. So, and you can still see some of that blue showing through. So I had to give it a layer of white chalk paint and that took away that gloss that I thought I wanted. But as with a lot of crafts, they evolve and they may not be exactly what you thought and when you started what you envisioned, but oftentimes they turn out even better than what you had on your mind to do in the first place. So here's the funny thing. I thought I wanted this milk can to, to be completely white with no color at all. That's why I took it outside to spray paint it, but that didn't work out because there was still blue showing through. So then I put the chalk, the white chalk paint on and once that got done, I thought, no, that's too much white. It needs some color. So that's why I'm now putting some gray paint where that blue was. And also with all that white chalk paint, my cow kind of disappeared on the can so <laughs> then i had to take that gray paint and dry brush over the cow and over the words to make them stand out and then what the heck i was liking that dry brushed gray so much i did it all over the whole milk can then those gray bands at the top and the bottom looked like they needed to be blended in more, so I dry brushed some of the white chalk paint onto those. And then I went back in with a small brush to fix any little imperfections where I might've went rogue with that gray paint and got sloppy. In the end, this milk can turned out exactly like it needed to. And the last flip was this brass shelf that I took outside and spray painted flat black matte. <laughs> and then I wanted to make a new shelf for it. And I'm using this Easter sign from the Dollar Tree. I just couldn't bear to have on camera where I had to take off his eyes but you have to take off his eyes and his little bow tie and his feet. And I'm going to use the wood contact paper from the Dollar Tree to make this look like a nice wood plank. If you are wanting to make something like this, then you can use this Easter sign or any of their long signs and two of their brackets that you can find in the garden section and make your very own shelf just like this. And so here I've just cut a piece of contact paper big enough to go over the sign. And I did go ahead and cut the piece a little bigger than what the sign actually is because I did want to wrap the edges so that they would have that same wood effect. And here I'm wrapping those edges and don't worry about this because we're going to cut another piece of contact paper to cover this side too. And this is how I did the ends so that there wasn't excess plasticky contact paper bulking up the corners. Now cut your second piece of contact paper and it doesn't have to be precisely the same size as the sign and cover the exposed side. Now as for the excess around the edges, all you gotta do is take a utility knife and trim it down. And now you have nice clean edges and a nice wooden plank to serve as a shelf. 
And if you want to, you could attach this to the bottom using E6000 or some heavy duty glue. And this is how it turned out. Next up in the hop is Sandra over at the Schwowen's Nest, and I hope you all have fun watching all of our videos that we've put here for you today, and have a wonderful, wonderful day. Bye!